Hey, hey, and welcome to the You Can Be Anything podcast, a place where we talk about every and anything that impacts our lives on this journey of becoming our best versions. My name is Solange Che, and I am your host. In this podcast, I share my experiences, I share my story, my successes, my failures, my fears, my challenges, all with the goal to inspire someone out there. I stand to tell you today that no matter how many rock bottoms you hit in life, there is always room for self-improvement. So do not give up on yourself because we are all unique in one way or the other. And because we have different stories and tackle life from different angles, I bring in guests to share their experiences, their stories with us, to give us tips on what they are doing and how they are doing things differently. Remember that in life, there is no one size fits all. So my goal is to be able to provide a repository where my audience will be able to come back to and say, hey, there was this guest that shared his or her experience on a specific topic and I would like to gain some more insights from that. So it also serves as a knowledge base. I hope you get the best value out of this and that someday you will come back to be my guest. Thank you for being part of the You Can Be Anything tribe. Hey, hey, once more, welcome to the You Can Be Anything podcast. Your girl Solange Che, aka Soso Babes. You all know what I do. I love to talk to people who are willing to share their stories with me. People are willing to share their experiences. And we talk about a variety of things, right? What does the title say again? You can be anything. So today I am blessed to have someone on the platform who is doing a similar day job like I am. So this is the time where I am navigating myself, getting through to the Salesforce ecosystem and talking to people about what their Salesforce journeys have been like and just wanting to hear their stories, their experiences, and we share a few tips and tricks here or there, okay? So today, thank you so much, Dave Flowers, for accepting my invitation. And hey, girl, welcome to the You Can Be Anything podcast. Hi, thank you so much for having me a second time, Shay. Hopefully this is just a continuous rotation for us. And thank you for the You Can Be Anything podcast, just listeners and viewers. Awesome. I'm so glad to have you here today. And again, just a little backstory. I met Dave Flowers when we attended the Dreaming in Color conference in New Orleans, and it was amazing. You know, for those of us who go around talking to people, it always makes a lot of sense when you see someone What I'll normally do is I try to create eye contact, right? I want to know if these people are welcoming. I want to see if they're going to talk to me. And it was so fun to, like, hey, I just said hi to her. Like, can you be uh, there? And she was like, of course, I want to talk to you. I want to talk to you. And that's how I interviewed. So if you've watched my, um, the little video I made for the um, Dreaming in Color, you probably, this is not the first time you're seeing Day. So Day is the second time you're talking to me. It's because you probably believe that I know what I'm doing. And that's why you don't mind adding your voice to this platform. Thanks again. Okay. <laughs> no, no, this is, this is an open call. I recruited people in person. I'm recruiting people now. If I know you, if you're in the Salesforce ecosystem, I'm going to send Shay your name. You're going to be on the podcast. So just putting that out there now, more to come. (laughs) Awesome. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. So um, talking to you today, one of the focuses I have, one of the main things I love to focus on is what we do for life, right? We met at a Dreaming in Color because we are both in the Salesforce ecosystem and we are colored. Is that the right thing to say? Are we colored or are we black? (laughs) Whichever one we want to call it. But it's a Dreaming in Color. So I do appreciate this a lot. And I want us to talk a little bit about Salesforce, what this whole Salesforce journey has been to you. But before we get into the nitty gritties of that, why Salesforce? Why did you decide to learn Salesforce or to work with Salesforce? Yeah, I can even take it a step further. Um, I can remember when I actually decided I wanted to get into tech. 
So I am a byproduct of an amazingly large family. My grandmother was the eldest of 22 kids, 17 siblings in the city. So just always have known village and support and all those things. So originally I thought I was going to run a chain of soul food restaurants and college hit me in the face and identify like, oh, you'll need all these minors and you'll need to take these internships. And one day I actually was just in the dining hall and I bumped into someone that was working on a coding assignment, very simple, but just got them to walk me through like the logic and what they were working on. And that was really the moment where I understood that, oh, I have a passion for people, but I, I have a real love for this technology thing. Like I don't just enjoy phones. I don't just enjoy typing. Like I enjoy problem solving and really everything has an answer. Even if it doesn't make sense, there's still an answer. So I, I jumped into that and originally came out of college and wanted to do .NET development. So I joined the consulting world and I knew that this was gonna be the thing that I did. And then I shifted from being a developer and then I became a tester. And then I shifted from testing and I became a leader. And it was all of these different layers, but on a, a CRM focused project. So I, I thought to myself, well, if I, I've been doing CRM for two years, I've got consultancy in my background. I understand how to you know, shift gears if I need to play different roles. What other CRM platforms are out there? And in my onboarding, in my first firm, I actually got a chance to be exposed to Salesforce through my friends that were a part of that practice and watching them go to focus on force to get certifications and studying in cohorts and actually going on these projects and doing different implementations. So I, I journeyed over to LinkedIn and I, I took a leap. I said, if I can learn one CRM, clearly I can learn another. And for the past three years, I've had an opportunity to see Salesforce in almost all of its capacity from discovery and business requirements and doing process mapping to being hands on keyboard and implementing it and then taking it even a step further with release management and planning out testing and all of the things for change management and how do you introduce it to your users. It's it's been a beautiful thing to see my passion and my love come into fruition with a platform that I discovered through another company. But even when I interviewed, I got to discover even more about Salesforce, like the nonprofit success pack and my passion around starting my own nonprofit and having those continuous conversations, which fun fact, and I, I gave the shout out at Dreaming in Color, I'll give it here on the, the channel too. The reason I was exposed to Dreaming in Color, I had a, an amazing individual, Dustin McMorris, who interviewed me to come into Slalom to join the Salesforce team. And he and I got to talking about nonprofit. And he told me about his wife who works in the nonprofit world. And actually, years later, Dreaming in Color came to Raleigh and Dustin reached out and he's like, hey, are you, are you coming to this? Would you would you want to go? My, my wife and I, we have no problem you know, getting you a ticket. Do you need any support with getting a room, you're welcome to come stay with us. And really just almost basically sponsored me full end to end to come and be exposed to the conference last year in Raleigh to now, this year, again, getting that sponsorship support, but adding the extra layer of, hey, are you looking for you know any networking opportunities? Are there some specific sessions you wanna go into and just learn more? And it's been, I, I can't learn enough about everything but I can learn so much about other people through what they've they've done for me. Wow, that is amazing. And just listening to how you say, so if I have to pick it back, you mean you've been in the Salesforce ecosystem, the CRM itself for three years, correct? You've Salesforce been- ecosystem, three years, consultancy for five. For so five. Right, out of, right out of college, jumped into it. Consultancy. That is, that's great because the reason I ask that, and when I listen to you talk and your journey on how you found your passion, you saw it, you took that leap of faith, right? You're like, hey, I'm going to give this a shot. What other CRMs are out there? That's that curiosity that when I talk to other people, I try to encourage them. We have to be able to try all the things. A lot of us out here get stuck on something and we want to, again, the first CRM you learned was not Salesforce, but you were open to learn other things, to be exposed to other types of CRMs. And that's how you ended within Salesforce. And again, your whole, the whole, again, you told me this when we met in New Orleans about how you got to the rally, um, Dreaming in Color. And who knows, the place is where we meet the people that expose us. And I want to emphasize again on the fact that 
when we get into new ecosystems, it doesn't have to be Salesforce. It could be any other platform, any other ecosystem. The importance of exposing ourselves and going out there to places where things happen, right? Not everybody can afford to go to a Dreamforce event, get it? And be, besides, Dreamforce events are hectic, okay? But events like the Dreaming in Color or just a mere, just like the Salesforce meetup groups, just those things. I believe yeah. personally, those are the things that gave me the encouragement I needed when I joined Salesforce, when I started learning Salesforce. This is about seven and a half years ago. Get it. So it's because of things like Salesforce Saturday. It's because of things like just going to the Salesforce meetup groups and talking, attending the Trailblazer Summit, just little things like that exposed me to places where I could talk to people about what they do, ask questions, and just be able to find my place within the ecosystem. I see that you did, you did the same kind of thing. You went around, you talked to a ton of people at Dreaming in Color. I bet you created your network and I am, I happen to be one of them, which is amazing. And yes, just a, a, a shout out to, you, you said, did you say Jason or Justin? Justin. Justin. Yeah. Shout out to Justin for Justin. again holding you up and bringing you along with them. You get it? I appreciate that. Now you got into Salesforce. So did you begin your Salesforce in consultancy straight up? Did you ever do admin or any of those other straight straight, up consultancy? Yeah, it was straight into consultancy. And I want to just double click on something before I say that. So a lot of times we toss out like the Salesforce ecosystem and in our Salesforce world, we understand that, but I think it's helpful to explain to other people like how we view it. So I, I've always Please thought of it do. as <laughs> it's it's just a galaxy of communities because you've got like your community groups, but then you've got your conference groups, you've got your groups that are focused on certain products, you've got your groups that are focused on helping you transition in, groups that are focused on helping students come in, groups that are focused on helping Salesforce elevate. It's all just a a universe of communities. And you really just get to tap into different ones based on what you need at that time or what you may need in the future. Yeah. So it's it's really, it's no limit to it. Like there's always a new community group. There's always some new conference. It, it encourages you to be innovative and think outside the box and like make more of this thing and this platform. Yep, that is true. I just throw the word. So another person is sound a buzz where they're like, oh, what do you mean by Salesforce ecosystem? So thank you for breaking that down. It does make a lot of sense. Now, because you already had some consultancy background and you got into it with Salesforce, did you find, did you have any challenges with what the true Salesforce now for Slalom? Slalom is a big consulting firm. Do you Did you have any challenges fitting in and um, I don't have to define why I asked that question, but let me get what you say. Did you find any challenges fitting in into Salesforce consultancy? No, because I don't try to fit in. I try to branch out. So it's never, I can't really put myself in a box, but also I can't categorize myself. I'm, a, I'm an amazing human that has the ability to see things through people, see things through processes, see things through technology. And I have a blessing to give people my vision in a way that they can consume it. So sometimes it's, I get to do things like hands on keyboard work and give demos. Other times it may be, I get to make beautiful diagrams and talk to you, facilitate workshops where it's, we have these big business decisions we need to make and how do we drive that using Salesforce? Um, I'm really into learning. So not just for myself, but also starting cohorts and teaching other people and really Exposing everyone to the knowledge that's out there. I can never learn everything, but I can get knowledge from everyone. So I continuously try to just almost amplify Salesforce as if I'm a brand ambassador, which is, you, you are as soon as you touch the platform. Uh, but also demystify. I feel like there's this crazy concept of like, you like it or you don't. You, it's hard to learn. It's easier to grasp. It's all about your your learning style and your how you understand things. Um, yeah. And there's a, there's a Salesforce tool for everybody. So everybody's a Salesforce admin. Yes, I agree with that. And I don't think there's anybody that knows it all. It is an ecosystem. 
It is huge, if, right? If there was a person that knew it all, Salesforce would probably go ahead and book them now to be like the new CIO going forward. <laughs> Thank you. And that is encouraging to those who do, who, who feel like, hey, I don't think I know enough. Or, oh, I only know this cloud. It is okay. It is okay. So long, become a master of the cloud that you love. I am a big, um, I'm a big believer in doing the things I love to do because um, I need to wake up in the morning wanting to get into my office and work I love I need that encouragement for some reason I need to love what I do and that's yeah. why my Salesforce journey was it was it was a strangely long one um, I have people that I mentored that transitioned into Salesforce and within a year and a half to two years they landed their first Salesforce gig that was not the case for me it was way longer than that so I spent a lot of time at had my first job when after I, I think I was working on my third certification. So I always like to encourage people that it is not how fast we go in here. Some people will be lucky and they will, by the time they even know about Salesforce and become associate certified, even or something, a company hires them. So I always like to encourage people to have that patience and trust the process, right? So some people will come fast for other people, like it was for me, it took a minute. And I bet that there are some people that it has even taken longer than it took for me, right? So it's just that relativity that we see in life. And you said something that I wanted to pick it back a little bit on again. It's, it was about when you talk about the ecosystem and how you don't want to, you don't fit in, right? You come in and you, you do, you don't put yourself in a box. I bet you that... Not everybody, a lot of people, and I don't even want to limit it to whether women or women of color or anything, just human beings. When they find themselves in, in themselves in an environment where they have to work with other people, there's always that challenge. And I have had a chance to talk to a couple of people about this whole um this I've I've I i have tried not to deal with these things so much that I'm even forgetting the word something syndrome, imposter syndrome. Right. Mm. I tell myself that no, when I just joined the still, when I just joined the industry, I heard that word. When I understood what it meant, I felt like this is what I have, or that maybe Solange is suffering from imposter syndrome. As time went on and I got to understand the dynamics of working with other people, again, I came from a place where I was the boss, I was a lecturer, I teach people, I was my own boss, right? Yeah. And coming into a place where I had to like interact with other people, get other people's perspectives, um, be mindful of other people, just, just it became a little bit more, I would not say more of a careful environment, but it became a little bit Mindful is the word. I think mindful is a word. Like I became more mindful. And by doing that, it helped me to, to say, hey, this is different from your previous life as an adult. I need to adapt. And that's why at the beginning I was wondering, I was like, oh, this imposter syndrome thing. But today I do not see imposter syndrome because I think that I have built myself, I have, and so I have built some, a level of confidence that I don't think I can easily be intimidated. What do you think about imposter syndrome? I have had it and been cured of it because I've identified my superpower. I'm I can never have imposter syndrome because I have the ability to make sure that everybody feels seen and heard. And it's hard to be an imposter if you're the one that can say, oh, I know this person, I know that person, they're working on this, they're interested in that. So I, I can never meet a stranger, but also I never let anyone feel like they just, even to like when we were talking earlier, like we've had a hard week and we came in here and we just initiated with laughs. Like I see a need, I feel a need. And sometimes it's just a good morning. Mm -hmm. How you doing? Yeah. Just hope you have a great weekend. Just the just the little things. So that that helps me kind of level set myself up. I'm supposed to be here because yes, there's this big bank of knowledge that I don't know yet and I need to catch up on. But there is something about me that I can do that no one else can that can help me bring value day one. So you can you can ask teachers, you can ask coworkers, you can probably ask friends. 
I introduce myself to everyone. I ask your name. I learn a little bit about you. And then I try to just sprinkle a little bit of something before I go. Um, I, I don't have any tattoos, but if I could, I get the, the Maya Angelou quote. People may forget what you said. They may even forget what you did, but they'll never forget how you make them feel. And I, I live by that, that mantra as much as I can. Wow. Now you just make me want to be aware I have been for a while now with the whole imposter syndrome thing. So just like you, I will say I got cured, right? Because I was there and I got to realize that even if I found myself in really technical environments, like with people who are highly technical, and I will ask myself, if I cannot do this technique, if I cannot identify these crazy APIs, I know what this code does. Yes, Solange might not be able to do it, but there is something that I can give. So there is a reason I'm there. I might not be there for the super technicality of that project, but I am there because my kind of energy is needed. So I always find what I can give. And if you're listening to us and you're still struggling with imposter syndrome, I'm so happy that day has a similar view to mine. And it's more about identifying what you can give, right? identifying the value that you bring in that place. Of course, you're always going to find yourself in places where people know more than you, you know more than others. How you treat the people you know more than is going to level set you to know that even the people who know more than you are not better than you. Right. So I'm so happy that you brought that up. And I'm so I'm so appreciative that you have that same view about the whole imposter syndrome thingy, right? Now, let me go back to you talking about, you to, when you spoke earlier on, you talked about some of your passions and you talked about teaching. Teaching is my baby. I love teaching. The best way I can give back with Salesforce is through teaching. Everybody that knows me knows about Salesforce. I am a Salesforce bee. I make the noise about Salesforce. <laughs> It's like someone once asked You're me. You're in the Salesforce hive. There's no beehive. It's a Salesforce hive. <laughs> yes. Someone once asked me like, hey, do you work for Salesforce? I was like, no, I do not work for Salesforce. I just happen to love what I do. I'm waiting on the brand partnership too. Don't work. <laughs> right. So yes, you talk about, I want you to talk a little bit more about your intention. I don't know if you're doing it already or how you give back if you, when you talk about Salesforce, when you teach Salesforce, when you spread the bank of knowledge that you have acquired throughout these years with others. Yes, I will be honest. I hate taking Salesforce certification exams. It. I understand the importance of them. I will never discredit them, but that, that studying process, getting Getting your first cert is probably your pass or fail. Like you have your entry level classes in college where they weed you out to see if you're really dedicated to it. And depending on which cert you pick, that's your, are you really dedicated to learn this platform? Are you really dedicated to, to get these roles? Because these questions, as crazy as they may look and as confusing as it may be, yes. they're, they're applicable. And you have to be able to declutter things and get, get down to the value. So it, it's building you into someone who can speak the platform language, who can go into that solution architect, technical architect, those higher level roles and really create these amazing designs or be innovative and help Salesforce come out with new projects. But my, my reason for teaching is it's usually best to learn something when you can teach it back. Yes. So I try to go after these certs. So first cert I ever went after was the, the platform app builder. Um, I failed it three times. <laughs> three times. Yeah, said, Mine was Service Cloud. I failed Service Cloud three times. Yeah, so no, no one really explained like this is your first cert. Maybe you should go after admin and then do App Builder. You so went I, I gave it, directly to App Builder. It was it was a cohort of us, so we we all agreed. We had a group that went after Platform App Builder. And we had a group that went after Platform Developer One, and then at some point we had people that understood that maybe I do want to do the admin first and make sure I have the base level stuff and then build upon it. So after platform app builder didn't work out and I, I took myself back down to the admin level, I then started to do kind of like mini teach backs with my manager at the time and just work with him to make sure like I understood what I was learning. And I went back to like making 
physical note cards because although Quizlet is good, sometimes like you just need to write things down in your your own words, have it handy. The little ring one where you can just like keep it in your pocket and rotate through them. Yeah. So as I built upon that, I started doing internal teaching. So helping people in our business advisory services group that were more focused on change management or strategy and operations and getting them into like, okay, here's an admin cert that they just released. Here's some of the language around it. Here's how like this looks for your role and really advocating for here's how everyone can get at least one Salesforce cert. And then this is how it helps me and you both be able to work together on future projects to now expanding that into within my admin Charlotte user group, just big shout out to them. Uh, I have actually just completed a BA certification study group. I saw that. I was going to give you a shout out. <laughs> yes, yes. So we had a, an amazing class of, of about five individuals. We've already got one certified, working on getting a few more. And the next group that we're working on is Service Cloud. So, you know, mm -hmm. I might have to tap on you, Shay, to do, to do a little, little debrief with us here and there. Stress me out, girl. I wouldn't lie to you. We Service Cloud. <laughs> I don't know why. But for some reason, Service Cloud has been one of my most difficult search, Salesforce search that I took. I for just real. got that one. I just yeah. got it. So I fully understand, which is why I'm doing the teach back. Because I need to make sure I understand. <laughs> Congratulations again. That's a good job. And when you, no, when no, you talk you. about it, one of the things that um, I could hear you echo in there is you started as a developer. And because you started as a developer, you had the tendency to just go into a builder. And that is what a lot of people do. Whenever I mentor, I have a couple of um, people that I mentor, whether you're a developer or an admin, I always try to encourage them to go admin first, at least get to understand, because I feel like admin is the is the base. Of course, now we have the associates, which are good, like, hey, test the waters. What does the exam look like, right? Do your search, do your associate and your AI, that's fine. But admin, I always look at admin to be that one that actually gets that gets you to understand the platform, whether you want to go the developer route or consultancy or admin route. So again, um, with your experience, I think that that actually ties because you want to get to understand the platform before you can even do the app builder on the platform itself, right? So yeah, so that's good. Let me tell you a little bit about my service cloud. I took service cloud and I failed. Same. I'm different with exams. I'm not. I'm not one who is scared of tests. Not scared. Not, I don't think scared is the right word. I'm not afraid to try to, to take tests. So I will read. Again, I came from academia, right? So I will read. I don't have a problem with reading. And the difference we did between the academia, my the field I came from, being a researcher, is that I did a lot of reading, not too much of hands-on. Now I have the opportunity within the Salesforce ecosystem when I do Trailhead to actually read and have the opportunity to do hands-on. So I feel like it sticks better. So that's why, to me, um, taking search has not been the most difficult part of Salesforce. And that's why I think I've backed quite a few. <laughs> I've backed quite a few of them. No, it, it, it's honestly harder to do some of these super badges than it is the exam sometimes. Yep, you're right. I used to be so focused on super badges. I miss them, though. I've not done one for a while now. Listen, but they, they've that, come out with super sets. It's, it's a lot more out there. Yeah, I think I need to go back onto Trailhead and become a three-time ranger. I think I'm I'm so swallowed up in work that I don't get the time to do as much as I want to do on Trailhead because man, Trailhead was my baby. I learned on that platform and I always give Salesforce the credit. I always appreciate Trailhead because it gave someone like me, when I learned Salesforce, the opportunity to learn without having to pay for classes and to just go at my own pace, do my day job, come back, spend the night on Trailhead, wake up. And that, that is how I learned for two, two years, almost the same thing. I just, I just slept on Trailhead. And the fact that I didn't have to pay for it, I always encourage other people to make use of it. Um, I don't say that the classes are not worth it, but if you're someone that can learn by yourself you and you can pace yourself and be disciplined to make sure to study, I think Trailhead does a good job. Right. So if you fail the service cloud exams, do not cry too hard because I bet that many of us out here have failed it. <laughs> there, there are many exams that have been failed on the first attempt. And sometimes that's that's your way of seeing what's on the exam. <laughs> 
there, thank you. It's an opportunity for you to see what's on them. So if you go back, it you can know what's on the prep. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> Sirk. <laughs> yeah. That's good stuff. Again, I, I love that giving back and like working with other people to train other people and encourage them to go in and take those tests, right? I believe that um, it's a good way, not only for you to learn, but also to put yourself in the market. Like yeah. again, shirts don't do the work. People do the work. There is something I read on LinkedIn and tell me your thought about that. Um, I cannot remember who said it, so I'm quoting that um, companies should learn to hire attitude more than the higher skills because you can teach you can teach anybody anything. Is that what they said? You can teach anybody anything, but you will it will be more difficult for you to change how somebody behaves. I think it was something like that. Giving credit to the soft skills over the most technical skills. What do you think about that whole talk? No, no, I think it's accurate. And I think it showcases why there's a reason most times you have two behavioral interviews and then one technical. Like they, you really will see organizations focus on as an individual, not a, a technical expert, not a contributor to a project team. Who are you and what can you bring to our culture as a business, as a, as a market, as a project team, mm -hmm. because there will be times maybe you you don't like your coworkers. That always will happen in your career. But do you respect the work that they do? Yeah. Do you respect how they contribute to you as an individual in your career? And are you able to contribute to their career in some way, shape, or form? Yeah. Mine, day. You're amazing at what you do. Just the way you respond to my questions, it's like someone would think that we had a conversation, guys. This is a freestyle conversation. <laughs> She Somebody's gonna think I'm I'm older than what I am, so I will I will put this out there. I am only 28, yes. but I I am I enjoy learning from all age ranges. So I I speak as if I'm older and like have a lot of wisdom. It's wow. it's just life exposure. It's fun. It's fun listening to you, and I probably that's probably one of the reasons why we're here today. Because when I talk to you, I don't necessarily feel like I'm talking to a twenty year to a twenty eight year old because of how you sound, the confidence, the way you speak. Even when we talk about the subject matters, when we had our little chats in um, New Orleans, it, you sounded so like hey, in control. When I was twenty eight, I never sounded anything like you. Trust me, I did not. Okay. And hey, if you're watching this and you're not listening on the podcast, they and I have our, <laughs> we have our, Maybe big, Astros. <laughs> our Astros, Astros is our stay for us. Okay. Astros stays. You've been, you've been doing so well, Astro. Thank you. <laughs> right. <laughs> Very Astros. Yes. And this is, this is just amazing. They, for somebody who is listening to you and I today, and you've shared a little bit about your how you transitioned, how you, not, not, not much of a transition even. Yeah, you might have transitioned from one tech space to another, one consulting to another. But if someone that is listening to us today and you want to talk to them about what it feels like to learn Salesforce and be successful and love what they do within the Salesforce ecosystem, what will you tell them? Find yourself in Salesforce, figure, figure out what the screen may be saying, but then apply it to what you know. So a lot, I'm a very big pool player. So I, if I struggle with things, I go and I shoot pool and I'll, I'll adjust it to, okay, I'm not, I'm not understanding why I'm missing this or what, what's happening here. Why can't I get this to work? Or is there something else I need to think through for the slow or just really try to de declutter it, but also understand that there's an ex Bensible amount of resources out here. So there's communities where you can ask questions. There's conferences where you can ask questions. In some cases, there's Salesforce channels dedicated just for these type of things. Mm -hmm. So being able to ask your questions and not feel concerned about it. There, there is no dumb question in Salesforce. And in some cases, your question might trigger Salesforce to think, you know what, this, we didn't think about that. That, that never came down our funnel. We we haven't really articulated that that's something we want to put out on the platform and make available for users. So see, see yourself as the person that could change everything. There's always something that you can bring to the table, but more importantly, there's something that you can receive from this platform, whether it's a job, whether it's knowledge, whether it's 
a whole new career path. You know, it's it's more than just a, a certification once you once you join in this. Wow, that's amazing. And because you have said that, I'm going to ask you that question. What's your favorite Salesforce cloud? All righty. So I am I am very biased to financial services cloud. It's it's been my bread and butter this whole time for most of my my implementations. But I would be remiss to not to not put service cloud in there because I've done some knowledge management work mm -hmm. and I, I dedicated a lot of time to that. So they're, they're neck and neck right now on the, on the love pattern. Oh, that's interesting. Mine is field service. I'm still a field service baby. It challenges mm. me. Maybe that's why I don't even know if you put me in financial services cloud. I don't know what I'll be doing in there. <laughs> <laughs> Something in my head tells me that it has to do with numbers and, money and stuff that I love to spend, but not calculate. So <laughs> yeah, so I, I've used it through insurance with uh, home loans. I've seen it in banking. So it's, it's really, what do you need it for most? So, I want to spend yeah. that money. I don't want to manage it. Okay. Just, just take a peek at it and partner learning camp. You'll, you'll never know what you'll see in there. <laughs> right. But yeah, so my Salesforce baby cloud, my Salesforce baby still still remains field service. I still love <laughs> field service. Maybe someday I'll get to know what your financial cloud is. But for now, service cloud is okay, but field service is my baby. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much, Day. And there is, again, this one has nothing to do with Salesforce. It's just uh, something that I do for the You Can Be Anything podcast because I have listeners who are within the Salesforce ecosystem and I have listeners who are in other walks of life. And one of the things I do on the show is I give my guests the opportunity to talk to the world. I always imagine that, hey, Solange is this woman that owns the mic that anybody can afford to talk to anyone in the world. And today I want to hand over that, my imaginary mic to you and have you talk to someone in the world. Let it come from any part of you. Just something that can inspire someone out there that is listening to you and I. Mm. Okay, so when, when you said on the spot, that's definitely on the spot. Let me... Yes! I love it when I do this! <laughs> Ooh, if I if I had to say say anything, and this is probably also an, an encouragement to myself, mm -hmm. sometimes all you need to hear is, I'm proud of you. A good job is great. You know, I appreciate... What you did is always good, but sometimes just give another person or ask for that. I'm proud of you because it, it means more because you know your journey, you know the battles, you understand the path to get to even making something happen, whether it's overnight, whether it's four or five years down the road. But ask for the things that you deserve and you deserve to hear someone say, I'm proud of you and you have the responsibility to tell somebody else that you're proud of them. Whew, that's amazing. Thank you, Day. I wanna have another chat with you sometime. When something <laughs> Listen, my, my birthday is in February, so we can we can come back, I'll spread love. Yeah, you know, I, might, I might have something. some new certs around then. Yeah, maybe you've gotten a new cert. What are you studying for now? What cert are you? working on if you were to take another data step cloud time. consulting already oh got it God. scheduled that's i'm attacking it at the end of the month we're gonna get this yes i've got that's, my that's my work please that's the same um again end of the month is too close for me <laughs> but well, so i i started a little bit of it because i attended the session during the dream and color conference so i i got oh. some initial exposure and now I'm just deep diving right into it. Um, actually, I have a demo org, so I'm doing some more hands-on keyboard configuration, trying to intentionally break things. Okay. Learn, okay. learn as I go. Okay, that's the, my the next set that I intend to look into when I can create the time. And because you've already, what do you think of Data Cloud? I promise this is my last question. What do you think of Data Cloud? I'm so biased because I like it. <laughs> But it's also because I, I don't have a reason not to. I haven't seen anything that's negative about it. Why why wouldn't you want this central place available to you? And it's av uh, available to talk to the AWSs and the Azures and all the, the big others of the world. 
it's, yep. it's nothing but benefits. <laughs> yep. I guess that's why I want to learn it too. I want to know what it can do. I want to understand better what it can do and what companies can do with it and what, again. Mm. So, yep. Now, I, I'm point. going to end this with a challenge for you, Shay, because I keep hearing you say, like, you're going to try to find time for your cert. There is Trailhead Go, the mobile app. So as you're taking a walk with the dog or you're doing things like you can do 30 minutes and just scroll and learn. You know, Guess you might what, get to the gym. Okay. I'm going to tell you I've taken your challenge already because it is with Data Cloud that I realized that Salesforce has added the audio. You yeah. know, I did not know that. I should tell you that how far gone I've not been on my trailhead. I noticed that when I opened the Data Cloud um, module and I saw that I could actually I could listen to it. So I've, there's, I've, there's I've, a lot. I love it. I love it. It's a trailhead podcast. I love it. <laughs> yep. Thank you for that tip. I'm going to keep doing it. All right. We, we need to make a count after this of all, all the plugs we've given. So we've done mobile apps. We've done certs. Yes. We've done products. Salesforce. Yep. We're here to amplify the brand. Call on us. Yeah. It's all Salesforce. Manifesting it now. We're going to be on the site. <laughs> Right, I look at you. You have your trail DX, you have your trail head DX shirt on, and I have my trailblazer. This is just a sign that we love what we do. It's it's just a sign that we love what we do. And if Salesforce doesn't it's see it's in the me, DNA now. They don't even know what they are looking for. You get it? <laughs> it's gonna be it's gonna be reposted. Salesforce is gonna comment under it. Like everyone that's listening and viewing, you heard it here. When it happens, tag me, say day you were right. Yes. Yes, yes, they. Yes, I agree. We're going to do that. This has been amazing. Thank you so much for saying yes. And I look forward to talking to you again on the podcast. Listen, I'll be more than glad to come back anytime. And I will be tapping on you for some of these service cloud teach back sessions. So look okay. out for advice from me too. Okay, I'm there. I'm right here for you. <laughs> Thanks again, girl. Thank you. Thank you so much for being part of the You Can Be Anything podcast tribe. I appreciate you for spending the time with us. Please kindly follow the podcast on all the social media platforms at You Can Be Anything podcast. And if you like to watch the video versions of the episodes, you can find those on YouTube under my name, Solange Che. Please kindly subscribe to that channel. I'd appreciate it. Also, if you would like to support the podcast, there is a support button on the website www.youcanbeanythingpodcast.com where you can click on to support the podcast. And for you who is ready to be my guest, do not hesitate to reach out either on the social media platforms or just email me at youcanbeanything21 at gmail.com. I'll be happy to have you. Stay blessed and be good to each other. Bye-bye.